Donald Trump Jr. is responding to a New York Times article that asserts that he was aware of the fact or had information. He received an email with information suggesting that Russia was interested in interfering with the 2016 yeah. election. Essentially, uh, the New York Times uh, uh, wrote an article suggesting that uh, Donald Trump Jr. received an email uh, indicating that a lawyer wanted to meet with him, a Russian lawyer wanted to meet with him, that would have information that would be detrimental to the Hillary Clinton campaign. And now what we see is Donald Trump Jr. releasing those emails. Yeah, so moments ago, um, Donald Trump Jr. says he has released uh, four pages of emails, and we have them here now. Uh, we've been reading through them in the last few moments. First, we should say that the New York Times is reporting they were about to release these emails, um, and Donald Trump Jr. clearly decided to preempt that action by the New York Times by publishing them himself. Now, the crux of the issue is whether Donald Trump Jr., um, and he did admit this over the weekend, he thought he was going to get some dirt on Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. in this meeting. He has denied, and this woman, this uh, attorney, denied this morning that she is connected to the Kremlin and that she did pass on any information, uh, and yet it, it, there was believed to be hard evidence. And now we have this email from Rob Goldston, who is a publicist um, connected to the Miss Universe campaign which was in Moscow in 2013, he writes an email to Donald Trump Jr. Um, and, and you're reading it here. The part I want to point out to you is he's talking about a meeting between a prosecutor in Russia um, who met with this woman, um, her father, it looks like, and in their meeting offered to, quote, provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father, his father being President Trump. Mm -hmm. um, he goes on to say this is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but as part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. This was an email that was sent to Donald Trump Jr. on June 3rd, which suggests, Anne Marie, that Donald Trump Jr. knew when he took this meeting a few weeks after this email was sent, along with Paul Manafort, the then campaign manager for Trump, mm -hmm. Jared Kushner, who is now a senior advisor to Donald Trump, um, that he was aware he was going into a meeting um, with a representative of a foreign adversary, Russia, who had dirt on, at, uh, back then, primary candidate Hillary Clinton. Right, and a little further on in the email chain, uh, you know, you mentioned that both Donald Trump, Trump Jr. and this attorney said that they were not working, were not government attorneys, but a little later on in this email chain, she's actually described as a Russian government attorney who is flying in from Moscow and will meet with Donald Trump Jr. So CBS News political director Steve Chigueras is joining us now on the phone. Um, Steve, what do you make of this? This is some pretty interesting stuff. Um, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, initially tweeted out earlier kind of uh, making fun of the uh, of the the Democrats focus on the Russia story which he's said was sort of fake news all along and now we see this email chain that appears to confirm a lot of what he sort of initially denied so I think there are two things that we need to look at here let's just step back and take a look at two uh, different silos here first the political issue here. This is somebody who is involved with the Trump campaign, uh, who, again, is yet another person, probably the fifth or sixth person involved, who was not totally forthcoming with information about meetings with people connected to Russia. Uh, it's a year after this meeting happened. Uh, we know and we've, and, the, and all of those people involved with the Trump campaign and the Trump administra administration have known uh, the amount of interest that has been uh, placed into what connections people involved with, uh, with Mr. Trump had with Russia uh, and contact, people with contacts with Russia. And yet his son had this email, uh, had a, a meeting set up on June 9th of 2016 and did not mention that to anybody. Uh, and it came out in leaks in the New York to, to the New York Times. That I think is a huge political problem for President Trump and uh, the people surrounding President Trump. Uh, and you, you read through these emails and the explanations that Trump Jr. gave initially to the New York Times had to be adjusted several times, mainly because the more details came out, more it showed that he knew from the get-go that this was a meeting about information involving, potentially involving Hillary Clinton and the DNC. Now, what we don't know, 
We don't know whether that information actually existed or whether it was real. We were told by, uh, by Trump Jr., we're told by his lawyer, we're told by everybody else around it, including the Russian lawyer who we met with, that there was no real information there. Um, so that's all we have to work on on that. The question is, from a legal standpoint now, uh, was there an intent to conspire with Russia and the Russia government to uh, interfere in the 2016 election? That's not a question I can answer. That's a question that the special counsel is going to be looking at. Um, I'm not sure this is the only piece of evidence they're going to be looking at to try to determine that. Uh, and I'm not sure you can determine that from this, this email. But what is, what is really curious to me, and I think is going to be very, very interesting to a lot of people as you read these emails, is the page four of this email. Uh, where, where it specifically says, this is the email from uh, the agent to Donald Trump Jr., uh, describing the information uh, that he, uh, his uh, agent can pass on to the campaign, saying, quote, this is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but is part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is the operative uh, part of all these emails, and it's, it's confusing to me, but I guess not, because the New York Times was about to publish these emails. But for Donald Trump Jr. to put these emails out uh, ahead of that and say there's nothing here, that part where it says it's part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump, that's sort of what this entire thing is boiled down to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Was the Russian government uh, intending to interfere in the election on behalf of, of Mr. Trump? Now, the intelligence community has drawn that conclusion. Most people have drawn that conclusion. President Trump has danced around that question for, uh, for months. Uh, but this is pretty clear right here, it seems, is uh, you have uh, somebody who is a, an acquaintance or a friend of Donald Trump Jr. saying that the information that, that he has to offer is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. So that seems, that, pretty, Steve. It seems says, pretty clear cut to me. Yeah, it also says at the end, I could also send this information to your father via Rona. Via, right, which but is, it is, is it is ultra sensitive. So wanted to send to yeah. you first. So, well, so not only has ahead. President Trump uh, uh, repeatedly distanced himself, um, his surrogates. It, as early as, as yesterday and this morning, have said there were the, there were not these contacts between the campaign and Russians um, that that directly talked about the campaign that they had no idea mm -hmm. that Russia was trying to help him. And yet, this is an email from June third, just weeks after uh, the nomination. Uh, yeah, and so I, I guess it's an interesting point uh, that you raise about uh, the sending the info to your father, but that we have not seen any evidence that the president has been tied directly to any of this stuff. This is the closest we've seen um, is Donald Trump Jr. Now again, we don't know for sure that there was any actual information exchanged and that there was any interference. Right. All we know is that there was an attempt, at least via email, to uh, connect, or th there was a connection of somebody who said that they had information uh, with Donald Trump Jr. Paul Manafort, the former campaign chairman, and Jared Kushner, who was advising uh, on the campaign. Now, we don't know if actual information was exchanged. We're told there was no information exchanged. It was bogus, uh, and, and the, there's a theory that maybe there was a, this was used to get this person to talk about other topics. Um, but that's a question that, again, is going to have to be, investigators are going to have to drill down uh, and try to figure out an answer to. Was there actual information exchanged? Was there conspiracy? Uh, between these folks and uh, and the Russian government to interfere in the in the election, this email does not clarify any of those questions, uh, but it does. I think it's more smoke uh, for this uh, for this administration and for the people involved in the campaign involving the Russia story, and uh, raises a, a whole new host of questions about what else do, don't we know publicly about these meetings and who else met with uh, with Russian officials and what was actually uh, accomplished from those meetings and was there actual interference that the campaign and people around the campaign knew about. Yeah, indeed. And when you say people around the campaign, we're talking about his son, his son-in-law, Paul Manafort, who was helping to run the campaign at the time. Mm -hmm. These are probably the closest people to candidate Trump and now President Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, CBS News political director Steve Jagaris, thank you so much. Thanks.
So just to update you all on what we're covering, uh, Donald Trump Jr. responding to allegations from uh, the New York Times that he knowingly met with a Russian uh, attorney who was operating perhaps as an agent of the Russian government to give information, to give him dirt on Hillary Clinton. He released a series of emails um, that you would think would be counteracting the allegations, but they actually seem to be endorsing the allegations. This is uh, the New York Times article uh, right now, and you can just see at the top on June uh, 3rd, 2016, an email was sent to Donald Trump Jr., which could hardly have been more ex explicit. I'm going to just jump down a little bit and, and quote, it quotes portions of this email. It says there are documents that would incriminate Hillary Clinton and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. That's what the email says. This is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but as part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. Yeah, and I'll just uh, read this part of the Twitter statement uh, that Donald Trump Jr. sent out along with this batch of emails, which contradicts the emails, like yeah. you said. He says, quote, the information they suggested they had about Hillary Clinton, I thought was political opposition research. Okay, so then I'll jump forward, and the point being that both parties conduct political opposition research. Right. Um, he said he did not believe the woman was a government official. And yet these emails that Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out specifically say that this is a government attorney right. who was flying from Moscow for this meeting, which he then takes again with the campaign chairman and with Jared Kushner, who remains a senior advisor to President Trump now in the she, White House. She is also denied that she's a government attorney. And uh, both uh, Donald Trump Jr. and the attorney say that what they primarily discuss discussed was um, ad adoption laws and the lifting of sanctions in relation to uh, Americans adopting uh, Russian children. So the question remains, Stephanie, um, why release this email chain? Because it certainly seems to be backing the narrative that the New York Times reporters have have revealed yeah. in their in well, their reporting. Well, I think that answers the question: is that the New York Times is now reporting that they were planning uh, to release these emails? Mm -hmm. So clearly, um, Trump Jr. is trying to get ahead of this story and sort of spin it the way he yeah. believes um, it went down. Uh, and and I, I think a, a key question is: what was wrong with this? Right? Right, is um, is meeting with as a campaign right. official, he was not a government official. He was a right. private citizen at the time. He had had business interests. The Trump Organization has had business interests in Russia. Um, does meeting with what, what many would consider a foreign adversary, even yeah. an enemy like Russia, and, and potentially agents thinking you're meeting with an agent of the Russian government, whether she is or not, and we don't know, right. um, is that okay? And, and, and is that is that above, you know, does that contravene any laws? And does it contradict maybe more important importantly at this point, because I don't know that it is illegal, mm -hmm. um, does it contradict statements that have been made over and over again by Trump administration officials, both during the campaign yep. um, and since President Tr Trump took office, yeah. which is that we did not have contacts um, with Russian officials about the campaign. Right. We did not know they were trying to help us. And I think very key to this also is the fact that you have Donald Trump Jr., you have Jared Kushner, his uh, son-in-law, who is now working in his cabinet, it is very close advisor and you also at the time the chairman of the campaign Paul Manafort in that room all in that meeting so what did Donald Trump know and what didn't he know these are three men who are incredibly close to him and were working incredibly close mm -hmm. to him uh, his son has said that his father knew nothing about the meeting at all but you know he's also said a few other things yeah. like uh, you know I had no idea and I don't believe that this woman was a government agent it says here twice in the email uh, in the email uh, chain here that she's called a Russian government attorney, not just a Russian attorney. Well, there are three investigations yeah. looking into whether or not there was collusion uh, in the 2016 election with the Russian government. And uh, and Donald Trump Jr. has said that he is willing to be transparent. Yeah. This is pretty Although transparent, it's, it's I suppose. It's hard to see him testifying publicly, uh, but who knows uh, yeah. at, at this point uh, whether we'll, we'll see that. And it'll be interesting to see whether there is some reaction from President Trump. Um, he hasn't said much about this. No. Uh, uh, the Donald Trump Jr. had earlier tweeted in, in a 
tweet that is now deleted that the, the, the media and Democrats are obsessed with this Russia Trump story. Mm -hmm. um, this is really, uh, by the analysis of our own John Dickerson earlier, this is the closest that this investigation has come to the president himself. Mm -hmm. um, Donald Trump Jr. is his oldest son. Um, he was one of his top surrogates, and those were his top advisors that were in that meeting. And again, whether or not she was indeed an agent of the Russian government, he clearly thought she was. Right, exactly. And you're, you're correct. We don't know if she was an agent. We don't know if anything of value was discussed. Donald Trump Jr. says nothing of value was discussed. Both of them say they only talked about uh, this issue of uh, adoption and, and lifting sanctions. But either way, does it even matter, like you said, if he's under the impression that he's meeting with an agent of the Russian government? Are there ethical dilemmas? Mm -hmm. Are there legal dilemmas? Just how far will this go? Many, many more questions to ask. Uh, of course, we're going to continue to cover this story for you and bring you the very latest and analysis. We're going to take a quick break, though. You're streaming CBSN, and we are always on.